Let's talk about the next topic which is dimensional consistency of equations. In the last topic, we talked about dimensions, what they are and how do we find out for different quantities. In this topic, we are going to learn about the first utility of this concept which is to verify whether a physical equation is valid or not. So starting off, let's say we have two physical quantities A and B. Now the addition and subtraction operations on these two physical quantities which means A plus B or A minus B is only valid if dimensions of A is equal to dimensions of B. Correct? Next, A is equal to B kind of proposition where we say that physical quantity A is equal to physical quantity B is again only valid if dimensions of A is equal to dimensions of B. Let's take an example for the same. I can say that force can't be added or subtracted to velocity, distance, time or any other physical quantity and force can only be added or subtracted from another force. This is a very very important concept because 10 newtons plus 5 seconds does not make any real sense. However, 10 newtons plus 20 newtons gives us 30 newtons as answer. Similarly, force can't be equal to any other physical quantity except force itself. So, any physical quantity can only be added or subtracted from itself as well as any physical quantity can be only equal to itself. It is a very very important concept. Now, we will see the verification of this same idea by a physical equation. So, over here we have the equation of kinematics which is x0 is equal to ut plus half at square. Now, we know that x0 here is the displacement, u here is the velocity, t here is time. A here is acceleration and T again uh, is time. We will verify the dimensional consistency of this equation. So The two rules that we have studied is that only similar physical quantities can be added which means the dimensions of ut combined must be equal to dimensions of half at square combined because only then they can be added. At the same time dimensions of x0 must be equal to the dimensions of the entire right hand side because only similar quantities can be uh, equated which have similar dimensions. So, starting off, we will find the dimensions of the LHS first, which I clearly know x0 is displacement and its dimension is simply L because it is a representation of length. Similarly, I go about finding the dimensions of u into t. Now, u is nothing but velocity, which is meter per second, which is L t raised to power minus 1, multiplied by t, which is time, which is simply t. Now, I can see t raised to power minus 1 and t raised to power 1 will cancel out and make it t raised to power 0 and the result I obtain is L. The dimensions of ut combined is L. Next, we will talk about dimensions of half at square. Now, I know that pure numbers are dimensionless. So, the dimension of half is simply 1. So, dimensions of A comes out to be L t raised to power minus 2 because it is meter per second square and then multiply to t square which is t raised to power 2 which gives us a dimension of L. So, I can first of all say that ut and half at square have similar dimensions and they are added which means this addition is totally valid. Now, L and L upon addition will again give me a third L just like 5 meters plus 6 meters is equal to 11 meters is the answer. So, the final result also has the same dimension. So, the result of ut plus half at square uh, is L uh, dimension. Now, I can say that LHS has L, RHS also has a dimension of L which means this equation clearly is dimensionally consistent. This is a very good way to verify the dimensional consistency of any equation at any point of time. Now, let us talk about some important points associated with the concept of dimensional consistency. The first of them is that whenever we have trigonometric, exponential or logarithmic kind of functions, their arguments always have to be dimensionless in nature. So, taking an example, sin x log y e raised to power z each represents trigonometric, logarithmic and exponential function. The argument of each of them which is x, y and z have to be dimensionless, it is a compulsion. Next, if an equation fails the dimensional consistency test, it is proved wrong. So, if an equation is not dimensionally consistent, it is clearly wrong. However, if an equation passes the dimensional consistency test, it is not really right. The example for the same can be x0 is equal to ut plus half at square and x0 is equal to ut plus 4 at square both are dimensionally consistent. Why? Because 4 and half here are pure numbers which are dimensionless won't affect the dimensions of the equation. However, we know that the second equation is wrong and the first equation is right. So, if an equation is proved dimensionally consistent, it is not deemed right immediately. However, if an equation is not dimensionally consistent, it is deemed wrong at the same spot. So, 
summarizing what we just learned so summarizing what we just learned i can say that principle of homogeneity of dimensions suggests that quantities having same dimensions can be added or subtracted and quantities having same dimensions can be equated to each other if they don't have the same dimensions they can't be added and subtracted and they can't be equated to each other constant numbers are dimensionless in nature for example numbers like half and four that we encountered in the past they are uh, supposed to be dimensionless quantity in the argument of logarithmic exponential and trigonometric functions ought to be dimensionless in nature it's a very important concept you must always remember if an equation is dimensionally inconsistent it is clearly proved to be wrong however if an equation is dimensionally consistent it may or may not be right we have to inquire more i hope these ideas are very very clear to you thank you